Welcome to Becoming Limitless. This is the podcast for entrepreneurs who want to optimize their brain and their body with biohacking. I'm going to teach you how to eliminate brain fog and upgrade your health so you can have more productivity, energy, and growth in your business. I'm your host, Tanessa Shears. Let's jump in. Welcome back to the Becoming Limitless podcast. How are you? I hope your week has been going really well and that you're feeling good and you're waking up energized. And if not, this episode might be a good one for you. So if you listened to the last episode, you'll know that our family is in the midst of planning a two month like live and work in Panama trip. That's going to be in January, 2024. And we're not really that big of travelers usually. So we're learning a lot along the way. And the problem that we're trying to figure out right now is that we have a cat and two months away, we need someone to watch our cat. So, you know, we've been finding lots of interesting solutions. Like there are people that will stay in your house and take care of your cat in exchange for staying in your house for free. And like there's this whole community of pet sitters that use your house like an Airbnb, but instead of paying for it, they take care of your pets. I'm just learning all of the things, but that is the problem we're trying to solve right now is how do we make sure our cat is loved for while we are away? We're looking forward to it. We're in that spot right now where we're looking at Airbnbs and flights and what cities do we want to stay in? And also how much stuff do we need to bring? Because at the time of our trip, we're going to have a, she'll be almost four as our oldest daughter and our youngest will be 19 months at the time. And we're like, how much stuff do we have to bring? How many car seats do we have to bring? So that's kind of the planning phase we are in right now. But for today's episode, you know I love a good conversation about sleep, right? And I feel like it's been a while since we've done one, so today is going to be a hot topic, and I can tell you, I would say 95% of my clients have no clue this even exists until I show them the data and bring it up, and they're like, no way. So here's how I'm going to like, let's segue into this. And I want to ask you some questions first. Have you ever noticed that you have a rough time sleeping for like a week or two and and then it'll go away and you're like, what the heck? I just must have been stressed out. Something must have been on my mind. Something's going on. Or perhaps you have spreadsheets like you're like me and I have clients that have had their own spreadsheets before working with me and trying to figure out like, what am I missing? I'm doing everything right. Like I've got, I've got the screens off and I'm going to bed on time and I've stopped eating a couple hours before bed. What's going on here? Or maybe, maybe at this point you've just resigned yourself that I am a bad sleeper. Everything just kind of feels lousy. There's no pattern to it. And if you're saying yes to this right now, I'm hoping that this episode might shine a light on why. Um, but before we jump into the content today, I'd like to say that this episode is sponsored by the Becoming Limitless program, which is the the program for entrepreneurs who know that working less might not always be an option, but you still want to feel better, make time for your health and feel focused instead of getting distracted and constantly having to fight off that afternoon energy crash. So in general, I'm looking to work with entrepreneurs who are ready to take action and get one-on-one feedback on their life with a proven system that has worked for dozens of six, seven, and even eight figure entrepreneurs. So it's broken up into phases. And in phase one, And phase two together, you're going to master what I call my 12 Becoming Limitless protocols that'll double your energy and focus so you can make more money in your business and get back that family time, fun, and freedom that you crave. If you eventually decide to go on to phase three, you're not even going to recognize yourself in a year. And it's for those who truly want to take everything they've learned from phase one and two and become fully optimized and limitless. So with multiple levels of accountability, access to your coach and personalization, this is the go-to health program for entrepreneurs. If this is something that you're excited about, either jump over to Instagram, DM me at Tanessa Shears to learn more, or you can just go to tanessashears.com slash call to book a consultation. Everything you'll need to know is going to be in the description of the podcast. Okay, let's get back into the show. So What we're going to be talking about is the cycle sleep connection. So if you are in the phase of your life right now where you have a regular period every single month, this is not meaning you're postpartum. This is not meaning you're menopausal. This won't work if you don't have a period at all. So if you have a regular monthly cycle, 
We're going to be talking about the sleep cycle connection, and I'm going to be showing you how it might be your menstrual cycle that is messing with your ability to feel energized and rested. And in today's episode, you're going to hear the summary of what I have learned, not only through my own research and from reviewing my own data, but from seeing the sleep and readiness statistics off of Fitbits and Aura Rings for myself and a bunch of clients. And it is really easy once you know exactly what patterns to look for, to start changing some of the things that you do and the mindset you have around it. So I'm just going to say it. Your sleep is going to suck more during the last week of your cycle right before your period starts. This I'm just going to say right off the bat because I find a lot of the time we like to be so critical on ourselves and be like, but I did everything right and I had the perfect thing and I did all the what I was supposed to do and I optimized my circadian rhythm and why am I feeling like this? I must be doing something wrong. What do I need to fix? And I want to offer this to you that maybe this isn't something that you need to fix. What if nothing has gone wrong? We don't even consider the fact that as women, our hormones fluctuate throughout the month. We've got a whole bunch of hormones going on there, but the primary ones that drive our menstrual cycles are estrogen and progesterone, and they are fluctuating in levels throughout the month. And That's just the main ones, not to mention testosterone in our bodies change, cortisol in our body changes, our ability to manage blood sugar. All of these things change. So it would totally make sense that our ability to achieve great sleep would also change with it, right? So I'm going to give you, you know I love a good science breakdown, right? I'm going to give you an idea of what is going on at what point in your cycle, and I want you to use this information to go through your month and observe what's happening, Oh, look at this. This is why this is happening. This is so neat. Because you know I love to talk about everything from like a this is so neat. I love this experimental type of attitude, right? Where it's not about perfect. It's not about always consistent. It's not about discipline. It's about this is my body and my health. And I just want to find out everything I can about it. It is so interesting. And then use that energy to make changes, right? Okay. So let's dig into it. Your menstrual cycle is divided into four different phases, and each of these phases has a different effect on your sleep. So let's start at the beginning. We're going to run through. Okay, so day one of your cycle is going to be marking the first day of your period when bleeding begins. So this will be the start of what we'll call your menstrual phase, okay? This phase lasts usually between three and seven days for the majority of people. And keep in mind, when we're going through this, there's going to be individual differences in all of these, but this is just a general flow. So in the menstrual phase, so while you have your period, it is totally normal to experience increased drowsiness and feel more tired during the day, even if you're getting a solid eight hours of sleep. It is totally normal. Your energy is not supposed to be at a level 10 energizer buddy, go, go, go every single day. I really want you to understand that there is a natural ebb and flow and we learn how to lean into that. During this phase, it is totally normal that your body needs more sleep than other times during the cycle. So if you're still trying to operate on your seven hours or your six and a half hours and you're telling yourself it's fine, it's fine, you may be able to squeak by during some of the other phases, but it's really going to come to bite you in the butt come your menstrual phase. Longer sleep duration may be needed. All right. So menstrual phase During your period, when your period ends, you move into your follicular phase. Now, when I'm talking about these different phases, it's not like it's a hard, like this one ends, this one begins. It flows into it because hormones aren't just on or off. They rise over a series of days and fall over a series of days. So I want you to think this as a, like a gentle transition into the next phase. So after your period, menstrual phase comes follicular phase. This phase on average lasts seven to 10 days. This is going to be the phase which you feel like 
damn, I am productive, I got stuff done, I had great sleep, my energy feels good, look at the quality, I'm doing great, like I can take on the world, plan everything, fill up the schedule, like you know this kind of feeling, I, I, and you know what the greatest thing is? I have a client and I always love to joke with her, she'll come in some weeks and she's like, yep, this was a good week, this is this, and I'm always like, let me guess, are you in your follicular phase? And she's like, yes. And it's beautiful because at the same time when she comes in having to our coaching calls, be feeling stressed out or overwhelmed or just like things are, you know, feeling like they're piling up on her. I'm like, it's okay. You're in your luteal phase, right? And she's like, yeah. So our phases, I can always tell, even with my my one tr- client that I train in person, because I used to be a personal trainer, I still have two clients that I like to train in person. I can always tell by literally her strength and what she can lift, what phase of her cycle she's in. Everything changes. That's the message I want to drive home today. You are not constant, all right? Okay, follicular phase, seven to 10 days, you feel like you're on top of the world, everything's going well. Then at about the midpoint of your cycle, so you know anywhere it fluctuates for people between day 12 day, and day 16 or 18, you get your ovulation phase. And this lasts three to four days. During this phase, some women can go through it and not really notice a change, But for some women, sleep can be compromised because when you ovulate, so when your ovaries release an egg, you get a temperature spike within the 24 hours that follow that release of that egg. And that temperature spike can disrupt sleep and make it hard to sleep. So it's really interesting. I woke up this morning and, you know, was looking through my aura ring data and I'm right in that ovulation phase. And I noticed last night sleep was a little disrupted. So when I woke up, I looked at my temperature graph, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. And my temperature had spiked last night out of nowhere. And I'm like, oh, there we go. We're just ovulating. Nothing has gone wrong. I didn't, I don't need to change anything. It was just where my body is, right? Then after your ovulation phase, which lasts, you know, three to four days, you flow into what we call the luteal phase, right? So this is kind of like what I think of like as our body's winter, so to speak. Everything is kind of quieting down. Energy is quieting down. This is the longest phase of our cycle usually and can go anywhere from 10 to 14 days. So we're looking at the last, you know, week and a half to two weeks before our period starts. And during this time, your hormones are changing more rapidly than any other time of the month, right? And this can actually cause a difficulty in falling asleep and actually can result in more sleep interruptions. So you know those nights where you're like staring at the ceiling or you just can't fall asleep as fast as usual or you're awake multiple times during the night. Even if you can fall back asleep, you just know that you're not having as much of a restful sleep as usual. It could definitely be because you are in your luteal phase, right? And the reason for this is your body, um, the way it operates with your circadian rhythm, I like to call them like your benchmarks of bio time, how your body is able to tell approximately what time of day it is. These things like body temperature, Uh, whether your body is secreting melatonin, uh, cortisol, which is that hormone that wakes us up in the morning. It's also known as the stress hormone. And the amount of REM sleep we get, like all of these things help our circadian rhythm function. Every one of these is thrown off by the rapidly changing hormones in the luteal phase. All of these things are responsible for good sleep. Think about this, body temperature. Your body temperature does need to drop two to three degrees Fahrenheit in order for proper melatonin secretion, right? That's why when it's a warm environment, it's very hard to stay asleep. Like think of those really hot days in the summer. And like, I know there's a lot of you listening that have AC. I live in Canada. AC is not a thing here, but we also get some hot days in the summer. So I know when it's hot, hoy, I have a trouble sleeping. It's just, you're sweaty, you're uncomfortable, you're tossing and turning. Well, your body's temperature is not well regulated during the luteal phase. So you naturally don't sleep as well. This affects melatonin secretion, meaning you're having trouble falling asleep, staying asleep, right? Cortisol's all over the place. It's higher during this time, right? And that means you're more stressed out. So you're more likely to be up at 3.30 or 4 in the morning reviewing your to-do list because, you know, that's what our brains love to do at 4 in the morning, right? And just naturally, when you are up more frequently and there's, the, you know, the, sorry, when you're up more frequently at night and cortisol's higher and all of that, you don't have as much REM. REM is what makes us feel cool as a cucumber the next day. So if you're feeling a little feisty, a little cranky, a little irritated, this is likely why. And on top of that, you're going to love this. During the luteal phase, your body's natural production of cortisol, that is the hormone that makes you feel stress, is higher. 
So of course everything feels more overwhelming. Of course your body is not operating at its best. Of course your thoughts are racing and you feel like everything is a, is a much bigger deal than it is. Nothing has gone wrong. This is your body, right? And this also ties into the fact that your blood sugar at this time is less stable. So if you've listened to my past episodes, you'll know that blood sugar, we all have it. It's not just something that is associated with people with diabetes. Blood sugar is what is what happens when we eat food, particularly carbohydrates, is broken down. It enters the body as blood sugar. So if our body is normally able to semi-maintain stable blood sugar, that means stable energy um, and focus and all of that kind of stuff, your body has a harder time keeping it stable during the luteal phase. So naturally, you're going to have more fluctuations when you eat the same foods, right? So let's take this luteal phase. So you'll notice I'm paying a lot of attention to this because this is where a lot of the sleep disruptions happen. This is why I kind of want to isolate in on here so that you can be really aware of what's going on for your body, right? So the luteal phase can be divided into two different parts, the early and the late luteal phase. I know, creative, right? Okay, early luteal phase. So what's happening during this part? When you transition into this phase, you get a rise in a hormone called progesterone. And progesterone causes an increase in body temperature, as we discussed, can really mess with your ability to stay asleep. So if you feel like you're waking up all the time, tossing and turning a lot, this could be why. Higher progesterone can also cause daytime sleepiness. Now, think about this. If you've ever been pregnant, you know that in that first trimester, you could sleep all day. And that is because progesterone is like surging and super high. So when we get that early luteal phase, we're actually getting a very mini version of what happens in the first trimester during pregnancy that makes you so tired. So it is totally normal during that early luteal phase to feel a little bit tired, more tired during the day. Nothing's gone wrong. All right. So then after the early luteal phase, you transition into late luteal or what a lot of us just call PMS, right? That premenstruation syndrome, like when we don't feel our best. What happens during this phase is that hormone progesterone, it tanks, it drops. And those rapidly changing hormone levels cause the difficulty falling asleep, right? And again, more daytime sleepiness, more drowsiness because your sleep was so fragmented during the night. Like I've even had clients that I've worked with before that I've had eight hours of sleep, they got the quality, but they still wake up feeling funky because when we look at like their sleep graphs on their aura rings or their Fitbits, you will get all of those spikes that is like, I was awake, I was awake, I was awake, even if it's just for a little bit. And that fragmented sleep can make you feel really groggy, right? So during this phase, you need to allow yourself a little more sleep than usual. So if you're usually in bed 1030 to 6, Maybe hop in bed at 9.45 or 10. Like give yourself the care that you need. Where we often get, I guess, mixed messaging on this is when we think of the male hormone cycle. So men get a full hormone cycle every 24 hours. Isn't that crazy? They go through what we go through in a month in 24 hours, but obviously different hormones. They have, you know, majority of testosterone. Instead, where women have estrogen and progesterone. So... They get their cycle every day, whereas we get it over a month. So naturally, if you're looking at men, their sleep need is the same every day because they're getting a 24-hour hormone cycle where we really need to think, okay, our sleep needs to change as our hormone changes. We also get less REM sleep, which I talked to you about uh, that mental clarity, that mental focus, right? And then we also get mood changes. I mean, we're probably no from no strangers to those. Like I found even during my last cycle, I get a little bit, um, two things wanting to burst into tears randomly. And I'm like, Oh, I know where I am in my cycle, right? There's that. And then there's the random irritation and anger, but I think that's totally normal. Right. And, And a lot of it is due to a drop in a neurotransmitter called serotonin, which is kind of, you think of it as just like the happy neurotransmitter, right? When you have a lot of that, you feel good. You feel happy. You get a drop in serotonin and that makes you feel down and that can cause trouble falling asleep and staying asleep as well. Right. And then not to mention during the luteal phase here, You get hunger increase, totally normal, and you get craving increase. There's actually a substantial body of research that shows that in this luteal phase, women on average burn 80 to, I think it's 80 to 250 or 80 to 300 extra calories a day doing nothing. 
Meaning like that's just how much more our metabolism revs up. And that is uh, to complement that hunger increase, right? Um, but the only problem with this is because you're hungrier and your food cravings, you're more likely to eat later at night because you're snacky and hungry. And this further disrupts sleep, right? It causes us a hard time because also our blood sugar is more unstable. So we have more hungry, we're eating more carbohydrates and that doesn't help because our blood sugar is unstable and that'll cause energy dips. And so all of this on top of the fact that you're just already more tired makes us feel like, what am I doing wrong? So I'm going to give you a little bit of an idea of like, here are some of the things that happened during that last week or so. And one, this is really, um, it is well documented as well, but I'm also sharing my personal experience and what is totally normal. So during my luteal phase, the week right before my period, here are just some of the symptoms that I noticed were different that week. So I noticed that I woke up sweating at least once or twice a night. My body can't regulate temperature. Like I'm literally like, what is going on? I am soaked. You're like throwing a leg out of the quilt. You're like pulling your shirt up. Like what is going on? Super sweaty body temperature can't regulate. And I also noticed by looking at my aura ring data that I am spending a lot more time awake in general. So if my normal awake times will be, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, it can get upwards of an hour and that's normal, right? I'm also way more likely to have those pesky 4 a.m. wake-ups and have trouble falling back asleep. Meaning like, you, you know what I'm talking about? Everyone has that time. Some people it's three o'clock. Some people it's 4.30. Some people it's five. When you wake up and you just like, no matter, even if your brain is not racing, you just cannot get back to sleep. I have way more of those in the week before my period. Also, I am waking up hungry, exceptionally hungry, one or two of those mornings. And this may just be because of those changes in blood sugar. Now, here's the other crazy thing. Like, let's get a little data eat. Let's go to the aura ring. And by the way, if I'm saying aura ring and you're like, what is she talking about? There is a ring I wear and it documents basically most of my body statistics. And I use it to make educated guesses on how to biohack and optimize my health. And it communicates with an app on my phone. So when I am in this late luteal phase, here's what happens. My heart rate variability, my HRV, that's your body's measure of if it is in fight or flight, it drops. And when that number drops, it means your body is experiencing more stress than normal. So basically, what does this mean? My body's under stress. We already talked about that one, right? I also see a body temperature increase, an average nightly increase from 0.8 degrees out of, for, uh, excuse me, my, we see a body temperature increase of about, I would say about 0.8 degrees Celsius or a degree and a half Fahrenheit. And this is crazy because like on these nights, like it's pretty much, it looks a lot like I'm sick, but I'm not sick. It's just my body under stress. Now think about this, like, I'm actually seeing my body temperature increase on the data on my ring, 0.8 degrees Celsius or a degree and a half Fahrenheit. Those are about the same thing. That is how much my temperature increases during that phase. And it's fascinating. After the day that you ovulate, you will get gradual increases in temperature up to a peak. And if the egg is not fertilized, what ends up happening is you're going to shed the lining and you start getting a decrease in temperature. And right when it comes back to baseline, that's when you get your period. It is so cool. If you're like, I want to actually see this in action. I believe I have a highlight on my Instagram. If you go to at Tanessa Shears, um, I think it's called biohacking fun. And a lot of it is just reviewing the data from my aura ring and other stuff like that tests that I've done and how it shows up. But I did a whole series of stories in that highlight on how your body changes during your period. And I show temperature graphs and all that kind of stuff. So if you want to actually see this, go over there or just send me a DM and be like, where do I find this? And I will direct you to the right place. Other things that happen. Are you ready for this? More. Your resting heart rate increases. And when your resting heart rate increases, you don't get as much recovery from your sleep. So I, my normal resting heart rate, the minimum sits around 47, 48 beats per minute all night. It can go up to 56 at peak. That is a significant amount of extra work my body is doing. No wonder we don't feel so good. And then also my breathing rate increases, right? Which means my body is recovering and it's not doing a good as job as making me feel fresh. I notice that my energy drops and the biggest thing I notice is my aura ring will spit out a score and tell me like how ready I am to take on the day, so to speak. 
I get scores as low as 69. And to contrast that, my normal readiness scores are between 88 and 95. Like that is pretty typical for me. I get really good readiness scores on average, but it can get as low as 69. And Oura Ring is like, do you want to put on rest mode? Like it looks exactly like when I am sick. So isn't this interesting? Now are we going to be so critical with our sleep? No, we get to be compassionate, right? So, okay, I gave you a ton of information on what happens during your cycle and how your sleep changes, right? It goes from feeling a little more tired during your period, and then you get this like rock star phase during the follicular phase, ovulation phase, you might get a little bit of a sleep disruption when the egg drops, and then luteal phase, it's this slow progression towards just disrupted sleep. And having your hormones feel off, the more tired, the more stressed, you're hungrier, all of that kind of stuff. And then what happens is you head right back into your period again. And this happens every month. Now, one thing I do want to say is that this is more accurate if you are not on a hormonal-based birth control. And I'm talking about a pill or I'm talking about an IUD that is hormone-based. The reason for this is when you are taking these artificial hormones, what actually happens is you don't actually get a period, you get a withdrawal bleed. And a lot of these hormones remain relatively stable throughout the month because you are artificially bringing hormones into your body, right? And I don't want to say this, like you get to make your choices on birth control and stuff like that. And obviously speak to your doctor if you're going to come off all that kind of stuff, right? But I was on birth control and I'm just going to share my experience from age 15 through to 32, 33? I'm 34 now, so a couple years ago. Um, But I came off, obviously, when I tried to get pregnant with Tenley, our baby, and have not got back on since. And I've only ever been off birth control twice. And that was in the times I was pregnant, trying to get pregnant in the short period after. Now, I personally dealt with debilitating anxiety while I was on birth control. I was treated at the hospital in an outpatient program for my anxiety levels and just feeling like I couldn't leave the house, the constant overwhelm, the disrupted sleep and all of that. And just constant anxiety throughout my life, which got manageable, but it was never great. And both times I have come off birth control, the anxiety went away. And on top of that, PMS went away. I mean, I still feel those natural ebbs and flows, but like I notice them, but they aren't, they don't change my day. Like I don't have to like have a day off to deal with PMS symptoms. Right. Um, so having said that, I never have gone back on and I just find that for me, I want my body to be able to do what it was meant to do and have these hormone fluctuations. And if you're interested in kind of diving into this, there's a book I read called in the flow by Alyssa Vitti. I've talked about this book before, but, um, I, when I was recognizing how many things birth control does to artificially um, change not only things like your gut microbiome, but your brain function and your ability to uh, feel calm and all these other things, I, I just found for me, I made the personal decision that I just needed to find other options because I really just wanted to optimize my body and let it flow. So My point in saying all this is if you are on a hormonal birth control, you may not experience this cycle the exact same way, but it does not mean that you won't have your sleep affected by your cycle. It just might look a little bit different than this. So having said that, let's go into like, what can you do? How can you biohack this and take action on this? So number one, allow for a bit more sleep and daytime rest during that mid to late luteal and menstrual phases. So the week before your period and the week of, or the couple days of your period, give yourself some compassion, give yourself that extra half an hour, an hour to sleep. You know, if you need some downtime in the afternoon, have the opportunity to take that if you can, or find out where you can get those little bits of time back for you because your energy is naturally going to shift and it doesn't mean you've done anything wrong. And this also doesn't mean it's going to drop out to the floor. That's different. I'm just meaning you should probably notice a bit of a difference. So this is the one thing I focus on. If I, like I said, know my sleep is going to be hit, I'm in bed earlier. I just know I don't want to feel like crap the next day or feel tired while I'm running my business. So I give myself that ability to catch up. 
Another thing that you can do is keep your blood sugar stable by eating healthy, whole foods, especially during your luteal phase. So we talked about how your blood sugar is less stable so that when you eat processed foods, lots of sugar, lots of flour, stuff like that, you're going to get wider swings. And that means you're on that energy roller coaster again. So during this time, you're really wanting to look, does my food come from the ground or does it have a mother? Whole foods, right? Keep your bedroom cool. This is another tip to offset your increasing body temperature, right? So In general, I find when I start working with clients, many of them have their bedroom temperature set to like the 70, 71, 72 degree Fahrenheit amount. Optimal sleeping temperature has actually been shown to be around 65 to 68. And especially if you're in this phase of your cycle where you tend to run warmer, keep your bedroom cool to offset that temperature rise. Um, And lastly, this is a really good time to show yourself compassion. If your sleep scores suck, If your stats don't look the same as the rest of your cycle, this is normal. And the big thing I want you to take away today is, of course, everything looks different right now. My hormones are changing. Of course, I'm feeling a little more tired than normal. And instead of trying to find ways to fix everything that you telling yourself has gone wrong, can you give yourself a little compassion instead? And if you're loving all this talk on like cycles and stuff like that, I actually did an episode called Hack Your Cycle for Brain and Productivity Optimization. It was with a guest and her name was Dinara Muk. And we actually talked about how to use these fluctuations in energy during your cycle to plan for your business and to optimize your productivity. So remember that little story I told you in this episode about how I can always tell when my clients are in their follicular phase because they'll be like ready to take on the world. You can actually use this natural ebb and flow and energy to plan when you do your big projects, when you do your interviews, when you do your meetings and stuff like that. And also to know when to lighten up on your calendar a little bit. Like if you know you're going into a week where your energy is going to be a little lower, maybe you don't plan three extra meetings that week. Anyways, that is a fantastic episode. Episode number 72. I will make sure to link that in the show notes. But I hope this has been really interesting. I know when I learned about it, I was like, what? I had no idea what was going on in my own body. And I find that that's what I love to dig into. And the more you know about your body and the more you know how to support it, not fix it, support it in what it naturally goes through and help yourself feel the best with the body that you are given, that is when you truly become limitless. All right. I hope that you have a beautiful week and I'll talk to you next time. Bye. Learn something new in this episode or feel inspired to take action? I'd love for you to share it with a friend and leave a review. Your review will help one more entrepreneur feel healthier, more energized, and focused. If you feel good about helping a friend or a fellow business owner you've never even met, you are my kind of people. I'm excited to help you become limitless in the coming episodes.